they said that it was against the tradition and the custom of their ancestors. They said that a woman could not lead men in war or in peace. They said that a woman could not command respect or loyalty from the people. They said that a woman could only bring shame and disaster to the kingdom. So they decided to postpone the selection of the new king until they could consult the oracle of the gods. The Rise of Ukeme, the Virgin Warrior Once upon a time, there was a kingdom in the land of Ibibio, known as Ekong, and there lived a princess known as Ukeme. Ukeme was the only daughter of the late king of Ekong, a prosperous and powerful kingdom in the land of Ibibio. She was powerful, beautiful, brave, and wise. But she had never known the touch of a man. She had devoted her life to saving the gods and her people, and she had no desire for marriage or children. When her father died, he left no son to inherit his throne. The elders of Ekong gathered to choose a new king from among the nobles. But they could not agree on a suitable candidate. Some favored Okun, a fierce warrior and a wealthy farmer who had many wives and children. Others preferred Obiut, a cunning diplomat and a generous patron who had many allies and friends and a few suggested Ukeme, the king's daughter who had the blood of royalty and the favor of the gods. But the majority of the elders rejected the idea of a female ruler. They said that it was against the tradition and the custom of their ancestors. They said that a woman could not lead men in war or in peace. They said that a woman could not command respect or loyalty from the people. They said that a woman could only bring shame and disaster to the kingdom. So they decided to postpone the selection of the new king until they could consult the oracle of the gods. They sent a delegation of priests and elders to the sacred group where the oracles dwelt in the dark cave. They brought with them a goat, a cock, and a basket of kola nut as offerings. They asked the oracle to reveal the will of the gods and to name the rightful heir to the throne of Ekon. The oracle spoke with a voice that was like thunder and fire. It said, Listen, O elders of Ekong, and hear the words of the gods. The gods have seen your dilemma and your discord, and they have decided to end your confusion and your strife. The gods have chosen the one who will rule over you and your children, and who will bring glory and honor to your kingdom. The gods have chosen Ukeme, the virgin daughter of the king, to be your new queen. She is the one who has the heart 
of a lion and the strength of a tiger. She is the one who has the wisdom of a serpent and the grace of a dove. She is the one who has the love of the gods and the people. She is the one who will lead you to victory and to peace. She is the one who will make a great and prosperous. She is the one who will fulfill the prophecy and the destiny of your land. She is the one who will rise above all others and who will shine like the sun. She is the one who will be your queen. Ukeme is the one. The elders were stunned and speechless. They could not believe what they had heard. They wondered if the oracle was mistaken or if the gods were playing a trick on them. They argued among themselves and tried to find a way to reject or to ignore the oracle's verdict. But they knew that they could not defy the gods or the oracle. They knew that they had to obey and to accept Ukeme as their queen. They returned to Ekon and announced the oracle's decision to the people. The people were surprised and curious, but they also rejoiced and celebrated. They loved Ukeme and respected her. They remembered her kindness and her courage. They trusted her judgment and her leadership. They believed that she was chosen by the gods and that she would be a good and a great queen. But not everyone was happy or loyal. Okun and Obiut, the two rivals for the throne, were furious and bitter. They felt cheated and humiliated. They hated Ukeme and envied her. They plotted and schemed to overthrow her and to take her place. They gathered their supporters and their followers. They formed a secret alliance. They bribed and corrupted some of the elders and the nobles and they persuaded them to join their cause. They contacted and conspired with the neighboring kingdoms of Mbata and Atan, who were enemies and rivals of Ekong. They promised them land and wealth, and they invited them to invade and to conquer Ekong. They planned to kill Ukeme and to divide her kingdom among themselves. They waited for the right moment to strike. When Ukeme was busy and distracted with the affairs of the state and the rituals of the gods, they waited for the night of the new moon. When the sky was dark and the land was silent, they waited for the signal of the all. When the bed of ill omen would cry and warn of the impending doom. But Ukeme was not on her way or unprepared. She had the gift of foresight and the power of intuition. She had seen the signs and the omens. She had heard the rumors and the whispers. She has sensed the danger and the betrayal. She knew that her enemies were many and that they were close. She knew that they would attack, that they would try to kill her. She knew that she had to act and that she had to fight. She gathered her loyal and faithful warriors and she armed them with spears and shields. 
she gathered her wise and trusted advisors and she informed them of her plans and strategies. She gathered her brave and devoted people and she inspired them with her words and her examples. She said to them, my people, my brothers and sisters, my children and my friends, I stand before you today as your queen, but also as your servant, your protector and your leader. I stand before you today with gratitude and humility, but also with pride and confidence. I stand before you today with love and peace, but also with courage and strength. I stand before you today to tell you the truth and to ask you for your help. The truth is that we are in danger and that we are at war. The truth is that our enemies are many and they are close. They want to destroy us and to take what is ours. The truth is that they will attack us tonight and they will try to kill me. But the truth is also that we are not afraid and that we are not alone. The truth is also that our allies are many and that they are far. We can defend ourselves and that we can keep what is ours. We will fight back tonight and we will survive. We will survive because we have the God on our side and because we have each other. We will survive because we have the heart of a lion and the strength of a tiger. We will survive because we have the wisdom of a serpent and the grace of a dove. We will survive because we have the love of the gods and the people. We will survive because we are Ekong and because we are one. So I ask you, my people, to stand with me and to fight with me. I ask you to be brave and to be strong. I ask you to be loyal and to be faithful. I ask you to be proud and to be honorable. I ask you to be Ekong and to be one. Together we will face our enemies and we will defeat them. Together we will protect our kingdom and we will preserve it. Together we will honor our ancestors and we will make them proud. Together we will fulfill prophecy and we will make our destiny. Together we will arise above others and we will shine like the sun. Together we will be a Kong and we will be one. Are you people with me? My people, the people cheered and shouted. They said, yes, we are with you, our queen. They raised their spears and shield. They said, we are with you, our queen. They beat their drums and sang their songs. They said, we are with you, Ukeme. They followed her to the battlefield and fought by her side. They said, we are with you, Ukeme. And so the war began. And so the war ended. Ukeme led her people to victory and to peace. She defeated her enemies and she spared her captive. She secured her kingdom and she extended it. She honored her ancestors and she 
made them proud. She fulfilled a prophecy and she made her destiny. She rose above all others and she shone like the sun. She was Ekong and she was one. Okon and Obiut, the two traitors who plotted against Okeme, made their feet in the war. Okon was killed by Okeme herself, who pierced his heart with her spear. Obut was captured and brought before Ukeme, who spared his life but banished him from Ekong. He wandered the land as a beggar and a pariah until he died of hunger and disease. Ukeme did not fall in love with any man. She remained a virgin and a devoted queen. She did not need a husband or a consort to rule her kingdom or to fulfill her destiny. She was happy and content with her people and her God. She was Ukeme, the one and only. She was Ukeme, the virgin queen, the lion-hearted, the tiger strong, the serpent wise, the dove graceful, the God's love, the people chosen, the enemy feared, the ally respected, the ancestors honored, the prophecy fulfilled, the destiny made, the sun shining, the one rising. She was Ukeme, the queen of Ekong, the queen of Ibibio, the queen of Africa, the queen of the world. She was Ukeme, the one and only. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like and share as this will support us to grow even higher. Thank you very much.